Here we go. First official uninterrupted descent. So I finally got to ride my new bike. If you watched the last episode, this is a custom titanium frame that I had built according to a very specific geometry that's made only for me. And we had one measly day of decent weather where I was able to ride this thing. And all I can think about is going back out on the trail with it again. My initial impression is that this bike fits me better than any bike I've ever ridden. It fits me better than my bike, if that makes sense. Yet it feels different. Most of the bikes that I've ridden and owned feel like you're sitting on top. This one feels like you're sitting inside of it, like you can charge into anything and the bike's gonna handle it. It won't, it's a 130 millimeter hardtail. <laughs> But it feels like that and it's a good feeling. I hit the whale tail crooked. Normally you can just squeeze your brakes and stop, but it's all wet today. And so put myself in a stupid preventable situation. We'll have to try another time. Climbing feels really good. The shorter 165 millimeter cranks, something I've never owned before. And I guess I'm gonna have to get them for my other bikes because they're awesome. And the fact that the bike is overall real stiff and light makes it a pleasure to climb with as well. But also the steeper C-tube angle positions me over my crank set when I'm climbing feels a lot better. We'll talk about that more when we get to geometry. Now descending, holy crap. I've had experience with 29 inch wheels, but never on a bike that truly fit me, that was truly adapted to a super small person. And even though this bike has less travel than my last bike, it carries more speed. There's no question about it. I mentioned in the last video that it has two water bottle cages. And so I was using the one on the seat tube for storage. I was using a Fidlock storage container. And then I found that this one that just fits in a bottle cage actually holds more stuff because it doesn't have the mechanism that locks it in. And so I got two bottle cages. I can carry a whole bunch of water. I can carry some stuff. And then of course, I've also got this little mount on the top tube that I can put my GoPro on. And I can either shoot from this angle or just use it to carry the GoPro with me in case I need it. Now, as I said, this is a multi-use mount. I can use it for whatever. Just for fun, I made a mount for my knife that matches the bike, the painter made it. And so if I'm going into a rough part of the woods, I have a three inch knife to keep me safe. I also made a little pump mount that can carry this little pump or it can carry some CO2 or I could put that in my storage container. So I've got tons of options and of course tools and a tubeless repair kit in my steer tube. So whatever I end up doing with this bike, I'm gonna be able to switch things around and adapt it. I like that. So I wanna talk about the paint job on this bike. In the last video, I saw some comments saying those decals look really good. It's paint, it's not just paint, it's Cerakote. It's an extremely durable paint. You don't need to paint titanium, and in fact, it's controversial to paint titanium at all, because if you have it, why not let it all show? My initial plan was to just have a raw titanium bike, but I decided to switch it up and go with the paint because I don't want it to look like every other titanium bike. I want it to be unique, and so the painter hid Oscar and drama and little callbacks to this YouTube channel and this bike. Sage, the company that built this for me is in Oregon. So there's a little Oregon hidden on the bike. There's also a little Pennsylvania because that's where the painter is. The bike was painted in Pennsylvania. Of course, it all got shipped back to North Carolina. And so right here in between the seat stays, we have a little North Carolina on the bike. Now another Easter egg you guys were staring right at is inside the badge on the head tube. You can see right here in the top of the Sage badge is the whale tail. Around the bike you'll see other little details like the Burn Peak logo, brewed in Oregon, made in the USA. Everybody who worked on this bike knows about the YouTube channel. It was a project that meant a lot to them because their work would be showcased so publicly. I wanted them to be really excited and proud to be working on this project and I think that tells a much better story. 
Now riding this bike has also taught me something. It made me realize something that kind of ruins my life a little bit. But before we get to that, I have to talk a little bit about the geometry so you understand where I'm coming from. The geometry of a bike determines basically everything about it. How high the bottom bracket is off the ground, the angle of the head tube and the fork, the angle of your seat tube, the distance between the front and rear wheel, how far you're reaching for the handlebars. And so what Dave from Sage taught me to do was look at geometry from a more holistic perspective. You have to look at the entire bike as a whole and indeed the size. Now one trend that we've been seeing a lot lately is seat tube angles getting steeper. Instead of laying back like that, they're starting to get a little bit steeper because it helps the rider center themselves over the cranks when pedaling uphill. Now when going downhill, we don't care what the seat tube angle is at because we're standing up. But when bike companies advertise that they have a steeper seat tube angle on the extra large, it's gonna make a huge difference because a half a degree is gonna move the rider up really far on the front of the bike. On the small or the extra small, it's barely gonna make any freaking difference. And so many bike companies have different seat tube angles for different sizes of the same bike. And so you can see how harping on one angle of the bike is kind of useless without the whole picture. And so in case you care, the seat tube angle on this bike is 76.21 degrees. Now another important number is the head tube angle. Now if you have a really slack head tube angle, like my Revel Rail, the fork is really raked out and it helps you hit obstacles head on. Keeps you more stable when you're traveling at high speeds. Now blue has a 66 and a half degree head tube angle. And a steeper head tube angle makes the bike a little more nimble. But that's not to say a bike with a slack head tube can't be nimble. And it's also not to say that a bike with a steep head tube can't be stable at high speeds. There are a lot of other factors. This bike has a pretty short reach. It's kind of a trend to go for a longer reach right now, but I'm actually not like a tall person scaled down. I'm, I'm totally different. And so I like a shorter reach. This has a 406 millimeter reach that's shorter than the reach on any of my bikes. Now, other things that can influence your bike's geometry are the width of the handlebars, the length of the stem, your stack height, the length of your crank arms. But my main takeaway from the process of building this bike is that one angle or piece of information about a bike's geometry is gonna tell you very little about where you're actually being placed on the bike without the whole picture. And your friend who's telling you what head tube angle or seat tube angle to get, they don't really know what they're talking about. And the best advice you could follow if you're trying to make heads and tails of this is to go demo bikes at a bike festival or a trade show. And that brings me to the realization that I came to after my first ride on this bike. This is one of the very few dress shirts that I own. I have to buy the shirt and then pay like another 60 or 70 bucks to have it adjusted to fit me. So all my pants have to get adjusted, all my shirts have to get adjusted. I have blocks on the gas and brake pedal of the Gator. And so I don't know why I was thinking all this time that the bikes I was riding fit me. No, this is actually the first hardtail I've ever ridden that actually fits me. And two days ago, I didn't know that. It's like the first time a puppy tastes human food, they're ruined forever. Now a person in my position can find a bike that fits them as close as possible and then adjust the bar width and the stem length and all these other items to adapt it, but there's nothing better than a custom bike. And if you were on the fence about it, allow me to push you over the fence. If you deal with the right person who's gonna help you dial in the geometry, somebody who really knows what they're talking about, they're gonna get you on a bike that feels better than anything you have ever ridden in your entire life. And that's how I feel about this. Now I wanna be super clear, if your body type falls within the normal range of human anatomy. The perfect bike is out there for you. They're designing these bikes to fit you perfectly. But if you're abnormally short or you got super long arms or whatever, a custom bike is your only option if you want the bike to truly fit. And that's bad news. I kind of liked it better before I knew that. So it should be pretty needless to say that I'm quite happy about this bike. It's been a project I've spent a lot of time on since July, and I've always wanted to build the best hardtail that I could possibly imagine. And so I'm very lucky to say that I was able to do that. Thanks for sharing this moment with me, and thanks for watching all these years and making it possible for me to do stuff like this. 
I can't wait to ride this bike even more, and really go out and explore and get lost on this thing. But until then, enjoy the rest of the year, have a great holiday with your family, and thanks for riding with me today. I'll see you next time. Rolling. Ha, ha, ha.